Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about the other videos? Another paid request, this time for my friend Mike, OCP Communications. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for the film called The Rescue. It was interesting to watch this film again because this is a film that is on streaming services. I don't know which one because the copy I saw, thanks to Mike, was like a cleaned up HD copy. Because the thing is, this film didn't even get on DVD in the US. It was only been on VHS in the US. Now, the reason it didn't get on DVD, and while it will never get a Blu ray, is number one, because it's Touchstone Pictures. Touchstone Pictures is related to Disney. So that's why I won't get a Blu-ray, because unless you're Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I mean, staked out with Emilio Estevez, Richard Dreyfuss does have a Blu-ray. Disney, they don't really care about that stuff on putting films on Blu-ray. They care more about their other streaming services. So me, you may see, I don't know. Jimmy Hendrix come back. As a dragon laying waste to Paris while singing the Coco Cabana song before you see some of these films get on Blu ray because Disney don't know squat about anything. Now, you may go, well, wait a minute. Okay, Blu ray, fine, but what about DVD? Like a lot of those films, Staked Out got a DVD, other uh, Touchstone Pictures films got a DVD. Well, number one, this film I'm talking about was not a hit. And it dealt with the country, North Korea. And if you deal with North Korea, people get very sketchy. Remember that whole thing with the interview? That movie with Seth Rogen and James Franco? And then North Korea going, if you release this, we're going to do this, this, and that. Whatever involves in North Korea, Red Dawn remake, for example. Remember the originally that was supposed to be about North Korean soldiers invading the U.S. They got upset. They changed it to Chinese. Like last minute. In other words, anything that deals with North Korea, they're not going to want to release, re-release anything of the sort. And the plot of this film is: imagine Iron Eagle and the Goonies combined, where a group of kids travel into North Korea to rescue their dads who were part of Navy SEALs because four people they go into North Korea because there's a submarine that's been disabled they go in to destroy it so that the enemy doesn't find it and get anything any precious information they also rescue a captain there so they get the guy out, they destroy the sub, but when they think the ride is coming for them, it is the North Koreans. They get captured, and even though it was in international waters, the North Koreans in this movie are lying, and they said that they're spies, and they're going to be executed in a matter of this time frame. So you think there's going to be a rescue operation? James Cromwell from Babe and General's Daughter and many other movies... He's like the big general guy. We're going to go and get these men. He's told, no, you can't. This plane you have, you can't do anything about it. The kids hear about this because they're eavesdropping. And they're like, well, wait a minute. That's our dad's. So kind of like Iron Eagle, where Doug Masters is going to go in to get his dad back. Only these, it turns out to be five kids, are going to go back to get their dad home. Each of their dad's home. And they do that. As ridiculous as that may sound, as preposterous as that may sound, that's what happens. Thus the rest of you. So yeah, this film, because it deals with people going to North Korea and all this stuff and find North Koreans, you're not going to get this release at all on Blu-ray or any of the sort. If it did, I would be absolutely surprised. Granted, it's such an unknown movie, I doubt it would make that much of a ripple, but I'm just saying, 
You know, it's because it's Disney, Touchstone Pictures, because of... Nah. Now, the director, I don't recognize the name, but the writers, I do. This is Jim and John Thomas. The writers of Predator and Predator 2. They wrote this film. I mean, they wrote this in between those two movies. This is after Predator. Because Predator was 87, this was 88. Now, the actors, you got Kevin Dillon... Which, I mean, the same year this came out, the Blob remake came out. And you just say these two films hurt his career until he did that TV show. Uh, how did I forget the name of it? Entourage. Because he did a film here and there, but these two films, they were big bombs. You know, one's for Touchstone, Disney. One's a pretty decent budget remake. They did nothing, so his star quality kind of went down a bit. Because, oh, well, he can't open a film? I guess he's no good. That's how Hollywood looks at stuff. But Tevin Dillon is there as a rebellious teen. You have this uh, lady, Christian Harnos, who knows a little bit of more shorts, but that's not utilized much except one brief scene. Uh, you have another guy and his younger brother. And then you have Mark Price from the 80s film Trick or Treat. He's in this as the son of James Cromwell's character, who's a bit of the, the talent relief. And Kevin Dillon, the lady Trishan Harlow's, Mark Price, the other kid and his younger brother, they're the five that decide to go in and go get their their dads out. This is a film, as I'm seven minutes in, that I remember seeing from time to time as a kid, taped on a VHS tape. I will say those memories are a lot better than the movie itself, because as I watched the movie itself, I'm like, this isn't that great. There's still a bit of nostalgia there. I don't mind the third act. I like the cast for what they had to do. I'm a Kevin Dillon fan. Being a huge fan of the Blah remake. But like I said, the memory of it was a lot better than the actual film. So it's more nostalgia than the movie that I've probably given this a pass. But there's a lot of issues. And number one, the fact that it's rated PG. I mean, even Red Dawn, would, which came out before this, was, I believe it was PG-13. So this is rated PG, so when the action scenes happen, there's not a whole lot that can be done. It takes a while for it to get going, and even their journey into North Korea, it seems a bit, other than a boat chase, really nothing else happens. Like, barely anything else happens until they get to where they need to go, and then they get the, the dads out. Now, like I said, as I'm watching it, a bit of that nostalgia, remembering bits here and there of scenes. I don't mind the the teen characters. There's not much to them development-wise. I mean, the most development you get is Kevin Dillon and the... I forget the guy's name. Kind of the... The... Wor the I don't know how to describe them. Kind of the... If Kevin, okay, imagine this is the Breakfast Club. If Kevin Dillon was Judge Ryan, uh, Judge Reinhold, that'd be a different Breakfast Club. If Kevin Dillon was Judd Nelson, this other guy would be the Milo Estevez of the group. And you know, sometimes they kind of fight with each other. Same thing here. They kind of fight with each other for a bit, argue with each other. Like, who's the leader? I imagine Kevin Dillon, the Blob remake, and then you have the other guy who you think is the lead but gets killed very early. That's kind of what this guy's role is. But there's not a lot of other development of the characters. Mark Price at times says a funny line here and there. Like they need him to get the plans from his dad. And he's like, what? I mean, my dad's going to buy the electric chair and my mom will pull the switch if they find out I stole this.
But, like I said, there's not a whole lot of development. And the, you, know, you don't get a lot of in-depth, you don't, which I guess is a good thing, you don't get a love story thrown in there because there's no time for love, Dr. Jones. Although, I don't know if there's supposed to be because there's a freeze frame shot at the end, which is cool. I mean, more movies should have freeze frame shots at the end. Where Kevin Dillon's talking with his dad or laughing with his dad because they just made it out. And the girl, he's got his like, arm around her and say, hey, let me introduce you to her as if they're boyfriend and girlfriend now. Which is not the case, They because they do absolutely nothing with that. There's no buildup of that. So I don't know if that was stuff that was put in and cut out, or, or what the deal was. I don't know. But yeah, it's a lot of like, buildup. It's the briefest you get of the, the teens, Kevin Dillon and Eddie Albert, Who's the dad? Kevin Dillon's dad. Eddie Albert, he's been in a few stuff. <sighs> Galaxy of Terror. He was the star of that. Among other stuff. I'm trying to remember what else he might have been in. I know he's been in other stuff. Pretty much they yell at each other in one scene. And then he's got to do his job. And Kevin Dillon smokes and is on a motorcycle. So you know he's a rebel. But even the Blah remake, there's a bit more to him and his character. And that's why the Blah remake works very well. Because, yeah, he's rebellious, but you see how nice he is to the old dude and try to make sure he's safe. And you get a bit of him and Shawnee Smith and how they grow to like each other. And little bits here and there that work well. With the, and within the time frame of this monster movie going on. That's how you did, you know, a much better movie compared to to this film. Like I said, the the one girl, you see her training for like 30 seconds, and then her dad has to leave. The other guy and his younger brother, the dad's like playing with them and says, Hey, take care of your younger brother, your mom for me. Sorry about that cut. If you saw me staring at something, it was at my phone. I'm like, oh shit, there's a phone call I need to take, so... I'll just edit these two together if I remember right. And try to remember where I was talking and what I was talking about. I was talking about the Blah remake. I was talking about how the characters... It'd be nice if there was some bit more development. Like Mark Price, all you know is that he's the son of James Cromwell. And that he knows a little bit about budding the office. And that's the thing, you think there'd be a lot more potential used with these characters. Whether it be, okay, the lady knows about martial arts. She uses it, like, once, like, not even against any of the soldiers. It's just, this is when they steal the boat. And Tim Dillon jumps on someone, he gets thrown about, and the girl, like, tits someone. He's like, oh, wow, look what I did. But you think that's going to be used anymore against any of the Korean soldiers? No. Okay, Mark Price knows a bit about electronic and how to bug. Okay, you think maybe he's going to use some kind of... How do I put it? Anything with bugging the bad guys or... Maybe he knows a bit about video surveillance as well. No, that never comes back into play. There's some nice locations. I think it's New Zealand doubling for Korea with the, the mountains. Like I said, I don't mind the actors. I like Kevin Dillon. But for the first hour, just not a whole lot's happening. Not a whole lot's really happened. I think a lot of people could be very bored with this movie. And very dull. Like Iron Eagle had much more of the energy, the soundtrack... You get stuff like Queens, you know, One Vision. Yeah, that rapport between him and Louis Gossett Jr. Red Dawn, things are going from the get-go and pretty dire and circumstances from the get-go. And there's a lot more action and stuff going on in Red Dawn. <coughs> Iron Eagle had a bit more of that snap compared to this. So I think a lot of people would find this a bit mundane, a bit boring, a bit... 
of a slug <coughs> and a slaw to get through. Damn, sorry about the coffin. <coughs> but I took a drink of water there, I swallowed down the wrong pipe. <coughs> but yeah, just one of those things that you watch, you know, and other than them at this bar where Mark Price gets this car, has a drive into the building, and then they get into the boat and they escape. The driving the boat, they did a bit of a boat chase, and the boat chase, I mean, is maneuvering a little bit, but I mean, nothing spectacular or anything. And then they meet this guy. Uh, what is it? What was his name? The character's name was. I wrote down because I'm bad with names. Tim Son, who's a contact. He said, Yeah, I know I was part of this operation, but listen, you two shouldn't be here, and the next morning we're going to take you back home. They're like, Screw that. We're going to go on. They sneak out. They get to where their dads are hidden. They have been taken prisoner. They come up with a plan where there's going to be a celebration with fireworks so they don't use that against the bad guys. <clears throat> Kevin Dillon's going to go in with a gun. <clears throat> and it, you know, it makes sense because he's not Rambo. He puts a gun on someone. He's not instantly, I'm going to kill him, blah, blah, means nothing. Okay, it makes sense. Like He is unsure. He's never done this before. He's scared. So you just say this is a bit more real. <clears throat> uh, but hell, the whole idea is so preposterous that the fact that that's the bit that's real is a bit <laughs> interesting. <clears throat> and I'm just spoiling the whole movie, I guess. Spoilers. He struggles with the guy. Eddie Albert kind of breaks his neck. Kevin sees his dad. They grab their hands. He gets them out. And you get some explosions, you get the f rockets of the fireworks shooting at the bad guys, they steep into the sewers, they even go down this pipe, light the goonies. Uh, they get to this plane, they get out of there, some U.S. fire jets don't know who they are, ready to shoot them down, the little kid comes out of the plane, rips open his shirt, I got a Bruce Springsteen shirt, born in the U.S.A., Okay, we know who they are. They come back home safely. The movie's over. <clears throat> I guess that's the only reason why this little kid's there. Because there's no other reason as to why the little kid is there. There's, there's no other reason at all. Because the little kid, he doesn't do anything. Now granted, I'm a bit surprised they didn't go the route of, Oh, this kid is super good with computers. Because, I mean, yeah... He was a little kid, but you had War Games or Matthew Broderick. You had, what was that little kid in Space Camp that knew more than he should as a kid. So I was surprised they didn't go that route. Because later on you had the girl Lex in Jurassic Park. You had that little girl in Robocop 3. So uh, maybe I'm, I'm glad they didn't go with that typical trope. But on the flip side, I'm like, why is this kid here? He's just pointless. He doesn't really do anything. He doesn't, what's his whole point? I guess that's his whole point, to have the shirt. <clears throat> and I just see why this is a bit forgotten. I mean, really, the, the interest is the crazy plot, the fact that it deals with North Korea, which is usually a bit no-no for dealing with in movies, having, you know, a young Kevin Dillon in there. And, you know, the feel-good ending and a bit of the action in the finale and... You know, not minding the cast helps it to a time waster for me. And nostalgia plays a big part of that. But yeah, the nostalgia was a lot more positive than back then than it is now. I remember this being a lot better movie than it really is. And sometimes it happens. You know, I don't think it's the worst movie ever. I wouldn't call the movie awful. But I just see a lot of people calling it dull. And boring. 
And it's not a film I defend. I don't call it an underrated gym or anything of the sort. I think it's a curiosity piece. They get released on Blu-ray. But curiosity piece kind of where it kind of stays at because I don't see myself ever watching this film again. Like I said, if you want Kevin Dillon, you go watch The Blob, which came out the same year. If you want this kind of story, you go watch Iron Eagle or The Goonies or Red Dawn. I mean, if you're a big fan of 80s films like I am, it's worth at least one watch. And like I said, there's a fun gun-ho 80s Americana feel to it that you don't get a lot nowadays. See, at least that has a f entertaining novelty to it. But this film needed to be more outrageous, it seemed. It needed to have bigger set pieces, big songs on the soundtrack. It may litter with crazy songs on the soundtrack. Even the store is kind of meh. Kind of like Bruce Broughton, who did the composing. Okay, it's North Korea, so make stuff that's sound Asian. Down, 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 down. It's not like a memorable score. I can't think of any songs on the soundtrack, which I'm surprised by. This seems like a movie that'd be littered with those type of songs. There isn't. And like I said, for the first hour, other than them finding out, and they get a boat and a boat chase, that's really it for the hour. That's not a lot for an adventure tale, for an adventure story. There need to be a lot more obstacles. There need to be a lot more... Maybe they thought, oh, they'd be too unrealistic. The whole idea is unrealistic to begin with. <laughs> Maybe that's what John and Jim Towns were saying. How do we do this realistically? Okay, they did a boat. Maybe they did get by by a boat chase. But it's like, no, dude, the whole thing's ridiculous. Just go for broke. Give in to the ridiculousness of it. Iron Eagle, I think, did that well. That's why you got you know, one... Yeah, that's why you have your lead character listen to Queen's one vision as he's fighting the bad guys in the plane. Well, sadly, that film's not on Blu-ray, but that's why Iron Eagle succeeds more. As well as there's a bit more of a character between him and Louis Dodds Jr. in here. There's not a whole lot of character between the folks as, in terms of dialogue or such other than, again, Tim Dillon and the other guy bickering from time to time. So there'd be a lot more camaraderie between the leads, a lot more stuff happening, should have littered with a lot of 80 songs, and more of that gun ho Rambo attitude. Some people compare it to Rambo, I'm like, I wish it was more like Rambo. So, rated PG, that didn't help either, being a PG rating, so you're very limited to what you could do. <clears throat> I mean, when the Goonies have more trials and tribulations than a group of kids going to North Korea, you know there's something wrong. Like the Goonies, <coughs> they felt more in danger. There was more obstacles in their way. When kids have more obstacles finding a fucking treasure, like pirate ship, than kids going to North Korea, you know there's an issue. There's a problem. It was easier for these kids to get into North Korea than these kids to find a, you know, to have a pirate ship. <coughs> but with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. That's the rest of you. Excuse my coughing and stuff. That's what happens when it goes down the wrong pipe. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.